Muichiro has finally displayed his elite astonishing fast, immaculate, and bratty strength. I mean, breathtaking strength. By single-handedly gutting Gyoko. Come on, he's the successor of the Sugikuni clan after all. But what if Yuichiro too survived the slaughter that fateful night and went on to become a Hashira? Would he be stronger? Would he roast Gyoko even more brutally? Will I ever reach 100,000 subs? We'll find out today. However, I advise you to grab your wallet and spread those leather cheeks wide open as a reward is waiting for you at the end of the video. Let's begin. In an effort to recruit the twins, Lady Amane once again treads towards the cottage where both Muichiro and Yuichiro reside. However, as Lady Amane is chased away by Yuichiro for the very last time, a certain demon slithering around in the premises gets a whiff of what's going on in the mountains. Later that night, while the boys are fast asleep, the humidity in the room starts rising, making them sweat. Soon the heat becomes unbearable, waking Muichiro up. But as soon as he wakes up, Muichiro gets confused as he finds a few dead fish lying around his bed. Irritated by the repugnant smell, he decides to look for his brother and figure out what is happening. He looks over at Muichiro's bed but sees nothing except a few dead fish lying on his food on as well. Muichiro realizes that something isn't right and rushes outside in order to find his brother. But as soon as he exits the cottage, his eyes witness a sight right out of a horror story. He sees Gyoko, the Upper Moon Five, holding a bloodied Yuichiro by his throat. As Gyoko turns his head towards him, Muichiro shouts, Kidding! Muichiro rushes to save his brother with immense rage. However, Gyoko throws Yuichiro towards him, and they both hit the ground. Gyoko states that he was planning to take only one of them with him alive, but Muichiro has made it difficult for him as he'll probably have to kill one of them now. In a flashback, Yoko is seen talking with Kokushibo as he reveals that he has finally found his successor and that he'll be able to root them out before Ubuyashiki gets to them. In the present, both the brothers helplessly try to run away from the abomination that has befallen them. But Yuichiro soon realizes that things might soon go south for both the brothers as the demon shows no sign of stopping. With an hour left until sunrise, Yuichiro picks up a hatchet and orders Muichiro to run while he holds off the demon. Muichiro resists, however Yuichiro pushes him aside, stating that he's nothing but a gullible Fool, much like his father. Muichiro takes this insult to heart and runs towards the forest with tears running down his face. Gyoko lets loose a revolting laugh upon seeing the brotherly squabble and releases some weak fish demons to chase Muichiro. Yuichiro charges towards Gyoko with all his might. However, the upper demon slaps him down, stating that he might regret killing the well-behaved one rather than Yuichiro. But Yuichiro replies with a savage comment, stating that even if he manages to kill a billion human beings, he still won't be able to fix his pitiful face. Meanwhile, Muichiro is seen running through the forest. However, his feet hit a root, and he stumbles onto the ground. His knee gets severely hurt, but he gives in his all to get up and survive. As he's struggling to get back on his feet, an image of his father comes rushing back to his memories, but they soon get washed away by Yuichiro's insults raining on his heart like fiery arrows. Muichiro manages to get up, but soon realizes that he's been cornered by fish demons. As Gyoko starts digging Yuichiro by his feet, in an attempt to pull him back into his vase, a gush of wind blows towards the two. Suddenly, Gyoko stops his pursuit and retreats back into his vase. Yuichiro is shocked. However, as he looks over at his leg, he spots Gyoko's cut-off arm still holding onto his ankle. He immediately gets up to get rid of Gyoko's arm. However, he notices Gyoko dashing towards him through another vase once again. Yuichiro takes a stance and lifts up his hatchet to fight the upper demon. But as soon as Gyoko inches closer to him, another person jumps over his head and blocks Gyoko's attack. Yuichiro's eyes lit up with hope as he lay his eyes on the Metsu Kanji of the Demon Slayer Corps. As the Wind Pillar arrives at the scene to exterminate the pest and unleash his ninth form, Itaten Typhoon. Gyoko manages to dodge the circular blow and retreat to safety. Sanemi turns around to reveal the numerous scars on his face and orders Yuichiro to stay back and look for cover. Meanwhile, Gyoku lets out a rather sus moan and states that he was waiting for a Hashira to make him his husband. Ah, <sighs> I mean, battle him to death. Sanemi dares Gyoko to look him in the eyes as they'll be the last that he'll ever see. Sanemi dashes towards Gyoko, however he instantly retreats to one of his vases and spawns another one of a tree. Gyoko goes on to taunt the Hashira that someone of his caliber is not fit for an upper demon like himself to fight, as his fighting style is brutish and lacks artistic touch. Sanemi, enraged by the upper moon, takes his stance and initiates the fourth form, Rising Dust Storm, and takes down the whole tree along with Gyoko's vase. With the night ending and the sun fast approaching the sky, Gyoko contemplates that fighting a Hashira up until dawn wouldn't turn out to be the smarter decision. Thus he retreats to his vase, and as it vanishes, Gyoko warns Sanemi that one day he'll have his hand in marriage. I mean, have his head. 
As the sun begins to rise, Sanemi takes a breath of relief and tries to find Yuichiro. However, much to his horror, Yuichiro is nowhere to be found after the battle, which makes him question if the upper demon actually got to him. Sanemi immediately retracts his thoughts and starts looking for the boy near the cottage. He suddenly spots the bloodied footprints of the boy leading into the forest and decides to follow them. Upon catching up to Yuichiro, Sanemi is taken aback as he's forced to live a nightmare once again. Sanemi, much like his own past, is once again forced to watch another boy in the lap of Yuichiro, rigged with numerous cuts all over his body and bulging beyond recognition. Yuichiro, drawing in his last breaths, is able to utter just two words before he dies from the loss of blood. Flesh Sword. Yuichiro lets out a wail from the bottom of his heart and vows that he'll exterminate every single demon off the face of Earth, even if he has to drag them down to hell himself. Months pass, and quickly under the guidance of Sanemi and the Wind Breathing instructors, Yuichiro masters all the forms of wind breathing. However, he is unsatisfied by the compatibility with his technique and ends up creating an offshoot known as Smoke Breathing. A few weeks later, Yuichiro is given an opportunity after displaying a staggering pace of growth and is entrusted with a mission of eradicating a demon, which is believed to be a 12 Kizuki. Yuichiro accepts and reaches the shrine in the evening, where tens of people have allegedly gone missing within the span of a week. Yuichiro enters the shrine and spots a mysterious woman playing a shamisen in a dark corner covered in a cloak. Yuichiro, sensing danger, grips his sword tightly and orders the woman to reveal herself by unfurling the cloak over her head. The sound of the shamisen stops as the woman reaches for her cowl. The woman unveils her face, and much to Yuichiro's surprise, it turns out to be a normal woman. However, as soon as the last rays of the sun hit the shrine's entrance, the woman gets up and gives Yuichiro a cold stare, followed by a sinister grin. The woman lets out a loud shriek as the veins in her neck pop out, and she transforms into a Nekomada-like demon. Suddenly, Yuichiro drops to his knees and lets out a deafening roar. He immediately goes for his phone and states that she looks nothing like the thirsty milk that was waiting for him 10 miles away. Just kidding. Yuichiro goes for his sword as the Nekomata grips her instrument. She declares that Yuichiro's credit card info is now hers as she lets out a smirk. Yuichiro dashes towards the demon demanding a refund as he used Sanemi's credit card and he won't be amused seeing an adult purchase on his bill. Okay, okay, I'll stop with the jokes. The Nekomata demon strikes a string on her instrument and suddenly the skeleton of human she devoured awaken and rise up on their feet. With the sound of her shamisen, the demon starts controlling the remains of her victims and unleashes them upon Yuichiro. Yuichiro cuts down the minions with no regard to their lives as former humans and advances towards the Nekomata. As soon as the demon notices Yuichiro closing the gap between them, she strikes another one of her cords. Suddenly, a number of buried skeleton hands emerge out of the floor and grab Yuichiro's foot, making him trip. As Yuichiro is about to hit the floor, he notices the kanji of five engraved on the demon's eye and realizes that she's in fact a demon move. He immediately breaks his fall and maneuvers his body into a handstand position. He thrusts his hands on the ground with all his might and jumps towards the demon, initiating the fourth form of smoke breathing, Curse Typhoon. The blow lands on the demon's shoulder and cuts off part of her torso along with her hand. The Nekomata Shamisen tumbles onto the floor. She realizes that she's facing a very skilled demon slayer and decides to run away rather than take her chances to bite the dust fighting an unwinnable battle. She dashes towards the entrance in order to escape. However, Yuichiro takes a long and heavy breath and within an instant closes the distance between them and cuts off her legs. Even before the Nekomata could regenerate her limbs, Yuichiro cuts off both her hands as well. The demon looks over in desperation. However, she finds nothing but Yuichiro's cold-hearted stare piercing through her eyes. Before she She's able to say anything, Muichiro lops her head off and proceeds to leave the shrine while sheathing his sword. Yuichiro sends the news of his success to the headquarters through his crow, but suddenly the shrine behind him collapses. Yuichiro turns back to witness a baffled feat as he notices that the shrine is cut half from the middle with a clean slice. Yuichiro notices the shadow of a man standing behind the shrine as his hands and feet begin to shake with fear. This was it. And if you want part two, use your breathing techniques on that like button and raise it to 12.5k so that I can use my what if style to slash out a new video. And as I promised, check out the video in the pinned comment for more information on the giveaway. See ya!